before I left today, I had like so much energy and then just doing the social event just like drained me. <laughs> I'm glad I went, but you know, your girl is tired and this is a long build, so buckle up, buckle ruse. What did I just call you? I don't even remember, I'm that tired. Today we're building the Zoom 75. Yeah. This is based off of Ultraman. So there's an Ultraman series. It's not like Tiga for like tiger. It's it's the name, Ultraman Tiga. This is Mellatrix's upcoming 75%. So there was a previous Zoom 75, but this one is a different variant of it. Different design and everything. It's a really cool looking keyboard. There was a new era of Ultraman, and this was the first season of it. Oh, it's magnetic. Boop. It's like um, a jewelry box, because look, when you open it... Oh my god, oops. <laughs> you have drawers, right? <laughs> okay, so first compartment, you have all the pieces you need. So it looks like it is going to be modular again. You have the magnetic badge, you have the rear badge, all the screws. So this looks like all the foams, comes with stabilizers, tools. Looks like here we have the pour-on dampener. Here we have more pour-on dampeners and more pour-on dampeners. What the? There ain't no way they gave me three things for pour-on dampeners. They're slightly different material. This one is like the full, and this one is the cork. I've never used the cork before, so that'll be interesting. So at the plate, we have PC, lots of flex cuts, and then we have the upper four, also flex cuts, and this is palm. Next, we have this one, which is the keyboard. So here we have the PCB, and then here is the board itself. So the colorway we have is the milk tea colorway. They've done this thing with the Tico where you pick one color and the boards actually have different accent colors. The accent for milk tea is pink. This is something interesting they've done with the color schemes. So you know with like zoom board, you pick the top color, you pick the bottom color, you pick like the different weight colors and stuff. But here what they've done is everything is pretty much set. So for example, this is just the milk tea colorway. But as you can see, whereas like, for example, aquamarine is like aquamarine top and then a cream bottom. They've pretty much eliminated the whole like different, you can do different tops, different bottoms. They've made it all just one thing. It's probably a lot easier for them, but it does stink for some buyers because say you like the milk tea, but you don't like the pink bottom. I don't know if they're gonna be selling extra parts, but this is how it comes as is. That is something to keep in mind. They might have extra bottom pieces for sale. I'd have to basically confirm if you can buy it separately, but from what it seems like is that all the colors are set. There's a lot of colors. There's 15 colorways. Forest green, gray purple, cafe brown, Milk tea, aquamarine, sky blue, mulga green, strawberry ice cream, black, scarlet, red, and white. Lavender, anodized black, gunmetal gray, and then heat white. This is the board. Pretty interesting. 75%. You do have this LCD screen in the top right hand corner, but this one is a module, so you can change it out. I heard that this is like an updated module and screen, so I'm excited to see how this is. The F row is separated. You do have an arrow blocker, and they have opted to block off one of the keys because normally you would have four keys right here. So instead of four, you would have the three. And then instead here, you have this. It reminds me of a rolling pin or like, you know, like the curlers that... <laughs> like they used to use in the day, right? So this does look like some kind of rotary encoder of sorts. The case does have a nice cherry lip, if you can see right here. In terms of the bezels, the top and bottom are gonna be thicker. The sides are gonna be slightly thinner. So here's a side. Whoa. So the side's gonna be a little different because it has the encoder 
right here, right? You see the two screws and then here you can see the top piece and then you have to see a little bit of the accent bottom piece, right? It doesn't quite go all the way down like up here, but it does encompass the entirety of the bottom case down here. Here you can see the cherry lip. I wonder if that means you can like swap this accent piece out. There is something interesting going on. You got a, a whoop right here. You got this like swoop a whoop right there. And then here's the back. So the back is the cool part, right? So here you can see these crossbars. You can see the weight is held behind these bars. This weight's literally like, let me in. Yeah, so you can see it's held by four screws. And then the weight itself, you can see the screws, one, two, three, four. So they opted to have the weight screws on the outside rather than on the inside. Basically what that means, at least what that means to me is that if you want to swap this out, it's really easy. You don't actually have to take the whole case apart. You can just unscrew it without having to take the board apart. So one of the selling points for this one is that it has a knob, a screen, and different areas that you can 3D print stuff. So basically they're saying this part is just called the unique soul grill. So I guess one way to look at it is that this is the soul grill keeping the weight. <laughs> inside i guess there's probably some kind of ultraman reference i'm not understanding but here you can see the four feet they are adhesive i kind of wish that they had given us different feet colors i don't know if that's an option but i do feel like the black feet with like the pink and the white kind of throws it off a little bit. That's just like me being nitpicky. And then here is the USB port side. So here you can see this has like the wing shape right here, right? There are some magnets right here. But here you can see this accent wing right here. Centered USB port. The customizable dual wing design. So this, this is the 3D printing stuff. And so here you can see top case, wing part, bottom case. And then here is the front lip. Notice how this fans out. They did mention that they decided to opt out and change the classic C corner of keyboards into this nice R. So what that means is like you can see like it has like the R, like the tail, right? Instead of just like this. So C versus like the R, which is interesting. So the angle from the board doesn't come from the bottom piece, it actually comes from the top piece. You can see it slants up, right? This does use the ball catch as most of these do these days. Here is the top piece. So this does use a ribbon cable right here for the screen, but it's not anything you have to plug in. I probably would never touch that if I were you guys, but the screen does use the pogo pin connector. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't be misled by this ribbon. So you do have these pogo pins on the side right there. This module is held on by, it looks like two screws. So one, two. This corner piece, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it is bigger than the standard, just like one U corner. Here, the rotary also uses pogo. So it looks like the rotor itself uses the pogo. And then this part for these screws, I guess it's just the accent right here. Here you can see the ball catch. So four, two on top, two on the bottom. Yeah, this top piece is pretty light. Most of the heft will come from this bottom piece. So you can see this bottom piece is the pink. You do have this cover right here. And then they have inserted these like silicone pads. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have three on top, three on the bottom. This one is actually smaller, but it's been cut off due to, you know, the USB connector here. These have been pre-installed for me already. Not sure if they're gonna be pre-installed for you guys, but that is something to note. So this is their version of like a force break and also to help secure the ball catch in the event that there's no loosey-goosey case. Here you can see the different mounting points. So there's four different types of mounts. So we're gonna have to like go through all of them. Here is a cubby with two screws. Here's a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. There are two little cubbies right here. Not quite sure what for, but I will point out that this does look a bit sketchy right here. That looks kind of sketchy. This one's fine, but this one looks a little bit 
not too close to the edge. This part, this is the wing. It's held on by two screws, so I'm guessing this is something you can 3D print and design yourself if you like. So you can see it flares out. I bet if you wanted to do like a different design, like flare out like a cat ears or something, you could. Okay, so this cover does have five screws. Whoa, check out these big mama batteries. So this is where the batteries are hidden. Okay, they've been taped down. I'm actually not going to bother with that. Okay, so I think the starting price for this board. So for this one, they have it listed for $195. But if you were to get like, for example, the anodized lavender, that one would be $210. So this is actually a very subtle detail I didn't notice before. But this part, it like actually sinks in. This is like a license plate. It almost seems like you'd be able to 3D print these things yourself too. All these pieces are very thin. So here you can see what I was talking about, how this actually sinks inside. So these screws are slightly different. Whenever you guys are taking it off, it's a little misleading. It might look like it's all the same, but this one, the cone head is this one. And then this one, the flat, is for the outer fronts. PCB. So no flex cuts on the PCB. It does have per key RGB. In terms of layout, you can do split backspace, has ISO support, step to regular caps, you can split the left shift, and then you can do your choice of bottom row. Here you can see the little tabs for everything that you'll need. This uses a ribbon magnet connector so it does still use the ribbon it's not like for example qk boards where it's like just on the board like this it is attached via ribbon cable but you don't have to worry about pulling it off whenever you're like disassembling the case necessarily and then here you can see these are the connectors for the screen the knob and here these pads are for the long pogo pins so that's what these gaps are for as you can see there is probably some rubber things so i'm assuming it would just fit like this nice that looks a lot better without these it did look a little bit sketchy so you put this in and then this pcb would then something along those lines make sure it's like flush on this no physical reset button these are all still using ribbon cables they've incorporated this half ribbon half pogo pin yeah so that is something i didn't point out but you can pick your choice of bottom row and it does offer split to space a bar. It's not the worst ribbon cable in the world that you have to like take it on and off unless you're changing the um, module. So they did eliminate that issue. So looking at the plate, so you already have a cutout so you don't have to worry about the knob. You do have flux cuts that you can see throughout. You can see the mounting points. We saw these on the case. And it looks like it has like the cover on it still. So I'm going to remove that real quick. So many cuts. This might be a just use the foam angle. Looks like maybe these are standoffs. So let's look at these kits we have here. One unique thing about this board is that it does have a corkscrew pad. Very interesting. I've never built with a corkscrew before. So that's the plate foam. This is the PE foam. It's a little scary about corkscrew is say it's not aligned and then you put in the switch and then a piece of it breaks off. I think that's the only concern of mine. Some would argue, you know, just don't miss. <laughs> looks like the three foam kits you have the standard classic foam you have the soft which is the pour on foam and then you have the crisp which is the cork so three different types of foams right we're going to use the cork let us do stabilizers i tried to pick the green because i wanted to use my caro caro he kept sets this was my third choice I wanted my Caro Caro, or I wanted the purple, and milk tea was my third. And they gave me, <laughs> they gave me milk tea. Okay. Yeah. That freaking beige. 
There is a god. So, Zoom 75 Tika. This is Malatrix's upcoming 75%. As found on most Zoom keyboards, right, you have the big LCD screen. This one they claimed is now new and improved. And look, you guys notice this, but that is something new. Basically, the keys that you press, you'll see it in the corner. Another thing to point out is that it has this volume scroller. This is kind of a design point of the zooms is that screen, knob, module, right? This, which is actually two keys, right? But you could change this out for a badge. The wheel does not push in, no. But actually from the top, you can actually see this magnetic badge. This is removable, neat. This little lip makes it so that the ball catch opening mechanism, you can grip onto this to help you push it up. So this design is intentional. Here is the back. You have this soul cage. It's a translation from Chinese, but it's almost like this weight is being constrained by a fence or the soul cage. Here is the USB port side. So a removable badge. It is magnetic with two small magnets right here. And this is quote, the wing. They're saying that this one, you can 3D print something else if you like. So that's the neat thing about this board. One of the selling points is that a lot of parts you can 3D print. They're gonna give you the file and you can do your own thing. So if you're someone who likes to do all that, that is an option that is available. Apparently there's modules that are compatible with this keyboard. So one of them being like Legos. So this board offers four mounting styles right silica gel split o-ring elastic bar and top mount i say in terms of like flex or like soft versus firm this is the order i would probably place it at so elastic bar being the softest split o-ring silica gel and top mount being the stiffest this is how i would do the rankings based on my build elastic bar is basically these feet that screw on to the PCB. So these two use the PCB, whereas these two use the plate for mounting. 
So elastic bar is basically like a silicone sock that you slide over the PCB. It has these little feet, I guess, to kind of help prop it up whenever you do type. But this is the top, this is the bottom, and the PCB goes in from the side right there. Split O-ring, you have to install these tabs onto the case. Basically, this would hook onto the split O-ring. So there are eight tabs on the PCB and each tab has the ring that would go over it. And essentially, it would look something like this, right? So the O-ring does hook on to this little ledge like that. And this is something that you have to screw in. So if you wanted to do this one, you'd have to screw on the eight ledges and then each ledge has two, so 16 screws. So those are for the PCB. Silica gel, you just slide these. These are like dumbbell gaskets. You just slide them onto the plate. Top mount, you guys all know top mount, but you would screw it onto the plate, onto the top mount. So I'd say in terms of building, this might be one of the harder parts for people to build. So what I would recommend is actually at least making sure that the side closest to the case is like situated in. It doesn't have to be flat. Just make sure the side closest by the case wall is at least situated in, right? This part, PCB. This part's plate. This part is the PCB. I don't know if you can see this taller ledge versus this one that goes all the way deep. This closed circle is for top mount. This open circle is for the silica gel. And then these two feet on the PCB are for the split O-ring or the elastic bar. So it has the hooks for you to hook on the ring, the O-ring, or you can just slide on socks. And then here you can see the two different holes. Close is top mount, open is the dumbbell that you would then slide on. And then you know earlier how I was talking about this is for the plate? You can see right here when I was saying this part's for the plate, this piece rests on there. And then all the big cubbies is where the PCB legs would rest on. It uses ball catch so it is easy to open the case. However, I'd say swapping between the mountings though is going to take you a bit longer. Don't get me wrong, I think it's not a bad board, but in terms of user error, I could see this being a headache <laughs> for some people. I'd say the toughest thing is aligning to make sure the screen and the knob are properly seated. There is a 1.2 and a 1.6 PCB. You can order different external weights. And look, you can order different badges, a different grill module, different rear badge. They're offering three foam kits. So here's the difference between the foam kits. Make sure you're listening. Standard is the classic foam. Number two is soft, which is pour on foam. So that one they're saying is it will mute the board. And then lastly, you have cork, which they say makes it crisp. So it's actually designed for foamless board lovers. And they said it provides a crispier, more defined typing sound, which I would agree. If you're someone who doesn't like usually building a foam or hearing that foam sound, cork is a good alternative for that. If you just hate foam and boards, you can use the cork. One thing to point out is that the Perky RGB, they've actually upgraded the LEDs. So it says LEDs now have improved wavelength, expanded color range, increased brightness. Overall lighting is twice as large, but you can turn it off. It talks about finish treatment upgrade. A Q static combines the durability of electrostatic coating with the delicate luxurious feel of electrophoresis so it's a mix right finishes both resilient and refined to touch creating a unique tactile experience so the screen you can put an image you can have it read things you can have it read like your computer temperatures it can send you like notifications there's a lot of things you can do with the screen Another thing is that they upgraded the tools that they provide you. So before with the module, you could only pick like the screen, keys, or the knob. You couldn't do like the knob and the screen. But with this design, you can now do both. This module, you could do the magneto badge, the screen, you could do two keys. You have a flex cut PCB and a non-flex cut PCB. So my thoughts are, I wish they have thought of a way to get rid of the ribbon cables completely. It's good that you don't have to interact with it, but I think 
for the ease of building and for people, getting rid of ribbon cables completely will be nice, right? Um, also, for these two modules, right, with the ribbon cable and like friction fitting it, I wish there was a way that was implemented to make sure that those stay fitted in. It's not like a shoddy like friction fit. Like I wish there was something to like, you know, potentially screw in and keep it in place. But that would then defeat the purpose of the pogo connectors. Because if you were to have something to screw those on, say you were to like take off the PCB, then you would like, oh, oops, you know, I forgot, right? So that is something that I think a lot of people might struggle with. I almost wish they had skipped the top mount. I understand why they added it for enthusiasts, but I think top mount with the ball catch, it's, it's difficult. And they even say on their build guide, like, this is difficult. Like, be sure you really want this. I mean, at that point, I would just get a different kind of like keyboard if I wanted top mount because some poor soul is not going to read the build guide and they're just going to do top mount. Like they're gonna learn. There's no easy way to remove it. And as a beginner, if you told me like, yeah, you gotta go to your bed and fling as hard as possible and hope the ball catch just falls out. I'd be like, excuse me? <laughs> you know, they do have a video on how to do it in case you do but I get it. They added it for the quote unquote enthusiasts who want it. Basically, you need finger strength to be able to remove it, right? But I do like the idea of the cork. So here are some positives that I like about this one. You don't have to interact with the ribbon cables. I think the cork is a very interesting idea. I don't know how it is like in terms of longevity, but for someone who builds boards, no foam, adding the cork did not sound like foam which was pleasant. It just kind of like rounded everything out, kind of gave everything just like a plus one. I do think it's interesting that they went for this like roller wheel. I do like this design more than like this. You don't have to move your hand as much. For example, you had like a rotary and knob here and you want to like turn it. You'd have to like turn your hand in order to like turn it right. Whereas this one, you could just type, type, type. Oh, you know, I'm going to turn this down like this, type, type, type. You no longer have to like reorientate your hand. So that is a nice touch. I'm interested to see like what people 3D print. That was something that is one of the main selling points is that you can 3D print a lot of stuff, which is kind of interesting. There was a Lego thing I saw and I thought it was really cool. Here's all the screen options that they are hoping it can do. So like weather, CPU, time, and then here, look. So this badge with a USB and the dual ring design. So this goes on the USB port side and it's kind of like a shelf that you can then either have like your Legos, Pop Mart collector, customizable. So you can print this out to do like whatever. I think they'll provide you the file. So if you want to print something, you probably could. That's really neat. And then there'll be a zoom pad to match it you wanted that but yeah that's bill i think it's a neat board there's a lot of new stuff but i do think they did well with the pork and i think they did better in terms of not adding as many mounting points as the zoom 65 but i think they should have gotten rid of top mount personally that's a boo. Thank you, Malatrix, for sending it out to me. I'm so sorry, you guys. I just got so sleepy towards the end. 